Welcome everybody to this episode of Tamora D's Chow Chow Vlog. Today we're going to be covering the daily routine I do or the weekly routine I do with my Chow Chows. Um, this is Ambrosia, she's going to be helping me today, won't you? Yep, so follow along and I'll show you my top tips for keeping a Chow Chow in top condition on a weekly basis. So this is Ambrosia I've just discussed. She is currently in her spring malt, so she has got hair coming away. You can see in areas it's already quite thin, but in other areas it's coming out quite a lot. So what we're going to do is brush this through. The three things I recommend you have is a good comb, coat rake and a slicker brush. To make sure a dog is groomed through, you always do the comb test. So you would bring a comb through and if you're hitting knots, that's when you stop with the comb and that's when you start with the brush. So I know from this back end that she needs a little bit more brushing. You want to make sure that you're pulling the hair away from the skin and that you're brushing all the way to the skin. So you should see the skin when you brush. If you can't, if you're just doing the surface or the, or the, like the, the tops of the hair, and not actually getting to the skin, you're not actually effectively grooming your dog. So we're making sure that we're brushing down, picking up this coat from the skin and pulling out any excess or dead coat that we find. These lovely long top coat, these are the guard hairs. They protect the coat from the harsh temperatures and the rain. And this soft undercoat that's coming out now is the summer coat that's shedding and the undercoat. So in the winter, that's quite thick and warm. And in the summer, it's more of a protective coat that keeps them from getting too much sunburn, things like that. It will keep them warm, but at the same time, it does work as a barrier against the sun. And the way their coats are designed is that it, it traps air in there. So they're not overheating as many people believe. So we're just pulling this dead hair away making sure that the skin is nice and healthy underneath. Good girl. Top tip, guys. I always find that it's much easier to put a dog on a grooming table. This doesn't have to be a purposely built one or you know, from, a dog, from a dog grooming shop. This can be something you find in an antiques shirt, uh, you know, as a second-hand store or an antiques fair. Just a, a table that you can put a little bit of a top on, a rubber mat like you can buy from you know, any good hardware store just on the top stop and slipping but if the dog's on the table they know they're being groomed it's so much easier than chasing them around good girl chasing them around your living room or wherever you're trying to do it while you're on the floor it also sends a very clear message to them that it's grooming time okay i've found a good bit here so brush from underneath now, admittedly, I have started straight for her back, but I'm going to make sure I do all the friction areas as well. Now, the friction areas on a chow will depend somewhat on go, you can sit down. will depend somewhat on the tools you use to walk with. So, if you're going to use the harness, you're going to have friction marks that go all the way around the chest, under the chest area, come up through the front and along the back, depending on the fit of your, of your harness. If, however, you're just a collar and lead, you're gonna have more friction areas around the neck. On top of that, you're always gonna get friction in the armpits, always behind the ears, and always around their back end. So I would personally recommend that you always start in those areas, especially if you've only got 10 minutes. It's better to do the 10 minutes that are, that are hard wearing, than it is to do 10 minutes along the back. So it again, I'm pulling away from the skin, pulling down. And I can take my comb through afterwards to make sure that I've got no knots, nothing's getting stuck. And if I find something, I can go back with my brush, work on those knots, tease any dead hair out. As you can see, it is getting a bit thicker around her neck. That's because I walk her on a collar and lead. Good girl. Good 
always work at the bottom and work up so start lower as i just did and you work your way up the neck that way you're not catching the same hair twice you start here and work up this hair is gradually coming over the top of it where if you start here you're put constantly going and you'll realize that you've missed a whole load of stuff underneath so it's always easier to start lower and work up higher isn't it good girl In a perfect world, you should be able to designate 10 to 20 minutes every day to brush your chow's coat. I say perfect world. I appreciate people have lives and jobs and families to deal with. But if you can, as much as possible, fit that into your routine. It means you won't have to spend most of your Sunday going through your dog. Good girl. Is that nice? Is that nice, good girl? So now you should have got all the dead coat out from around your dog. What I want to address now, <laughs> very funny girl, are these slightly long bits that have cropped up. Now where she's lost lots of her undercoat, these guard hairs are now quite long and are out of proportion with the rest of her. So I just want to trim those down. So these are my scissors. Here I have straight pair of scissors curved pair of scissors, a single-sided thinning scissor and a double-sided thinning scissor. Honestly, you do only need these two, but it helps to have all of them in the arsenal so you've got them. So I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to pick up my thinning scissors and I'm going to look at the shape of her head and it comes around, I'm really good girl. it comes around in a curve here. So if you follow from the bottom, good girl, we're going to come up and round nice thing with the thinning scissors is you don't have to cut too much and I'm just taking those tips out good girl just taking those tips off <laughs> is it funny noise do you want cuddles go this side then shall we and follow around just those funny wispy bits that are sticking out taking out those overly long areas so that when her hair is down, it forms more of that round shape. You're bored already, are you, Rosine? You're just following around in my circle shape, all the way up to these wispy bits up here. Now, if you are brave enough, obviously, you take your curved scissors and you're just going to follow the same way. Good girl. You're literally taking off tips, guys. I'm not taking off lots of hair, just tips. There's bits that were too long and were making her head look a bit straggly. You looked a bit like Wurzel Gummidge, didn't you? Good girl. I'm just using the natural curve of the scissor to give me that round shape around the head. With scissoring, always do a little bit, and if you need more, you can go back. Obviously, if you take off a huge chunk, you can't stick it back on. So just the tips, and then straighten her up and reassess. If you're too worried about taking too much of that out, you can just chop down with the thinners and help to thin that out again bring my comb around and now she's back to having got in your face a rounder face a few bits here. just make sure that's not because of the collar take these little bits out here because they are Good girl. And now you don't look like a scraggly warthog. Yeah, Gracie. So as I've got my scissors out, I'm just going to trim Rosie's toes. <laughs> <laughs> you kiss on 
your camera. You're a very clever girl. So I'm just taking my comb and I'm lightly brushing up the hairs. They do seem to grow slightly longer between the toes. I'm going to take our curved scissors again. That's the ones on the curve. I'm going to lift the toe up and just very gently along the top, take out those lengths. Good girl, sister. Good girl. Hey. Good girl. And with your comb, you can brush them up again. See where we need to go. Less is always more with feet, especially if Rosie's deep still. Good girl. So now I'm just trimming around the base, just around the nails at the bottom. following around the curve of the paw. So a chow's foot should look a bit like a cat's paw. You don't want great big spread wide toes. Thank you for my kisses, it was lovely. So then same with the back toes, these are a little bit longer. I'll do the same thing. So I'm going to follow around the base first, just so I can take out those really long bits. any long bits and instead this time we're going to come down over the toes just picking up those extra long hairs she needs to stop it yeah we're just going to go along and take out those long areas following around from the pad just taking the tips and again you've got a little cat's paw Hmm. Helpful girl. The next stage I'm going to do is her tail. So as with the body, we need to make sure we're brushing from the bone. This is normally easier if they're lying down, but it's not. It's not impossible to do it in the air. Stand up, good girl. And I can see I've got a few tangles in here, so I didn't want to go straight in with the comb. Quick disclaimer here: Rosie is in season, so she does have a bit of coloration at the back end so as you can see I've got not much left in the way of her feathers at the back just make sure what I've done can brush through with the comb and it can so there's that so there's a heavy little trick here guys if you want to trim a tail it's too long what you're going to do is you're going to twist it until you get to all the uneven areas then with your scissors you're going to put your thumb and you're going to cut around your thumb when you then drop the tail out you're going to have a natural curve to follow and I need to get rid of good girl, stand up, about this last inch because it's quite thin and wispy so I'm following this curve here naturally I'm just going to take that inch of hair out see when she had a lovely thick lush tail in the winter there's enough undercoat for that to look nice when it's all thin this time of year it's not much point and following on from there i'm just going to take my thinning scissors and i have a natural curve the line of her buttock there i suppose her rump I'm going to take the thinning scissors. Good girl, stand up for me. Good girl. And take some of this thickness here. And then following the curve, curve upwards towards the tail. Sometimes, because they've got such thin hair there, especially when they've blown their coat, it ends up looking quite thin and straggly. But you can just take the ends off, just that top inch. Good girl, stand up for me. Good girl. It actually ends up looking much thicker. It's no different to us having a bit of a trim when we go into the hairdressers, just to tidy up any dead areas. Because she is in season, I'm taking a little bit more off the inside than maybe you'd like to. But it just means there's a little bit less hair. Good 
in the way. Good girl. Last but not least, I'm just going to work on these front legs. Again, she doesn't have much of the way of fluff in here. I've already brushed them through when I was doing the body. So what I want to do now is just bring them out. And with my curvy scissors, I'm just going to take those good girl ends off. Obviously, when working with a dog, you have to get used to the fact they are going to move and react accordingly. Good girl, you're nearly done. And there we go. So just to recap, these are the tools I did. I had a slicker brush, straight comb, thinning scissors. These are straight scissors. I didn't really use those. You could probably get away with those if you didn't need to. Um, a curved scissor and the coat rake. So there she is. Takes about 15 to 20 minutes if you're doing this every day or every other day, just to keep them looking in tip top condition. Obviously scissor work doesn't need to be done necessarily every time. In fact, probably only once a week. But if you like to keep the end short and if they are losing their coat, it just tends to help them look a little bit tidier at the end. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will list all the products I've used again at the end of the video. So if you need any help, just give me a comment in the messages in the comments below and I can get back to you.